Hey guys, a few days ago I set myself a little exercise to see if there's any missing children's cases in Tennessee or surrounding states that are similar to that of Summer Wells. I was kind of hoping that if there was a suspect in that case and it was there were similar characteristics, it might give us some clues above and beyond what we already know. No such luck, but I did come across this case I'd never heard of before. And this is the case of Chloe Leverett and Gage Daniel, the half siblings. And they disappeared under the most mysterious of circumstances in September 2012. So I want to talk about it. Very, very different case to that of Summer Wells, but just as mysterious. So let's get into it. So as I said, this is Chloe and this is Gage. They were aged nine and seven at the time they both disappeared. And uh, I'm getting most of the information from this article from Medium. There's quite a good write up here. But there's news about them and information kind of scattered about the internet. I'd just never heard of this case before. Chloe and Gage lived in Middle Tennessee with their grandparents. Lived on a farm, very rural setting, lots of land. They love to explore. They love playing with their grandpa. And that was exactly what they were doing on Sunday, September 23rd, 2012. So it was a Sunday. Monday, of course, would be a school night. And they were brought in by their grandparents about 6.30. And a neighbour saw them around that time playing outside as they usually did. Then at 9.30pm, a 911 call came in to the fire department about a house fire. The farmhouse that Chloe and Gage lived at with their grandparents was ablaze. It was a big fire. Firefighters struggled for hours to put out this fire. The first news reports that came out were that all four occupants were dead in that fire, sadly. But in the days that followed, a different story started to emerge because they did find Grandma and Grandpa Molly and Leon McLaren, a well-known couple in the local community. Leon was known as Bubba, very helpful guy. And um, they also found the family dog, who was a poodle. And they found a cockatoo, who was the pet bird of the house. But no sign of Chloe or Gage, which is absolutely mind-bending to me. So three days later, when... You know, they combed through the debris, through the wreckage of this family home. Firefighters were convinced that Chloe and Gage's remains weren't in there. They issued an Amber Alert. And this Amber Alert still stands on the TBI's website. They're still there. And to this day, there has been absolutely no clues on what happened to Chloe and Gage. All right, so let's say a little bit here about Chloe and Gage and their home life. As I said, they live with Bubba and uh, Molly, maternal grandparents who loved them, adored them. Their mum, Cheryl, was also involved in their life. Chloe was born on June 23rd, 2003, and Cheryl had some struggles and she tried her best. Sadly, Chloe's dad died and that made Cheryl struggle even more as a single parent. She then got into a new relationship with a man who became Gage's dad. So two years after Chloe was born, Cheryl gave birth to Gage. His full name was Christopher Gage Daniel, but they called him Gage. She really struggled. She really, really struggled. And when Chloe was four and Gage was two, custody of the kids was given to Cheryl's parents. Like I said, they had a a very nice life. The next five years would move along uneventfully. Cheryl worked on getting her life back together. Molly and Bubba continued to give Chloe and Gage a stable and loving home life. And Cheryl saw the kids 
and it was all fine. Like life was chugging along okay. Chloe and Gage got on well. Gage was known as Buster <laughs> to the family and he followed his grandpa everywhere. Absolutely loved him, was Bubba's little shadow. Bubba and Buster got on so, so well. Gage did have some developmental problems. He was diagnosed with a rare condition called Dandy Walker syndrome, which is a congenital condition that you're born with and um, it's to do with brain development. The symptoms can include balance issues, poor coordination, developmental delays, but it didn't stop him, didn't slow him down, and um, him and his uh, sister Chloe just had a good life. And then it just all went tragically, tragically wrong. And we don't know what happened. So between 6.30, when Chloe and Gage went in, and then at 9.30, that 911 dispatch call came in of a house fire. There's no contention about who called that 911 call in, probably a neighbour. That fire could be seen from all around. The fire department arrived and the whole place was engulfed in flames. And that is a picture of the fire once it was out. I just completely, completely destroyed the farmhouse. Cheryl, who also lived in the town, farmhouse was on the outskirts of Unionville, she was alerted and she raced to the scene and she just watched in horror. And she thought that she'd lost both of her parents and both of her children on that night, which is horrific. But as I said, the children's bodies were not found. On investigating the origin of the fire, Molly and Bubba were both found in the basement. And the basement door, which was normally kept shut, was open. Bubba kept propane tanks down there, and there was like 30 tanks of propane, and one of them had a leak. Now, the local sheriff's office brought in experts to continue to sift through the remnants of this fire, it included professional arson investigators, forensic analysts. One team who was brought in was one of the expert teams that was brought in to help sift through the World Trade Center debris after 9-11 to try to find the remains of these children. They brought in the best people in the United States and still couldn't find any remains of the children. And you can see here forensic experts sifting through the debris, painstaking, and it took months. And nothing was found. People thought that maybe that fire got so hot that it literally just disintegrated them. Well, if that fire was that hot, how come the bones, the body of a little poodle dog and a cockatoo were found... If the fire was really that hot, like hotter than a cremation place gets, which is about 1,500 degrees, I think, and house fires don't normally get anywhere close to that. Might get to 1,000 degrees, 1,100 degrees, but they don't reach the, the power that's needed to disintegrate a body. And even in cremations, there's bones left over, like bone fragments left over that have to be crushed to make the ashes, they go through a special machine. In fact, the medical examiner of the county came out and said that the fact that they found the remains of a pet bird, they'd certainly have found the children. So what happened to Chloe and Gage? As well as thoroughly, absolutely painstakingly, piece by piece, sifted through the remnants of that house, they also began searches around the entire area. They searched the area on foot, by air. They brought in search dogs. They brought in cadaver dogs. Nothing. No signs of Chloe and Gage in the woods. You know, one theory was that they got out, they were scared, and ran off into the woods, got injured, got lost. But their remains weren't found in the woods either. So the other possibility was, did someone take them? Was it arson? Was this a kidnapping? They made it look like the children had perished in the fire when actually they'd been kidnapped. 
They look to every family member and everybody in the community who might have a reason to take the two children. And everyone was cleared. Cheryl was cleared. Gage's father was cleared. And Chloe's dad was deceased. So could it have been that Molly and Bubba smelt a gas leak, went down to the basement. That's why they're in the basement with the basement door on. Yeah, possibly. We don't know what sparked the fire, though. And authorities did say that although this was a red flag that this propane tank was leaking, there was no sign of an explosion. So we don't know. We don't know. Now, periodically, the local news in Middle Tennessee, or in Unionville, does updates and the most recent update that I could find was on the 10 year anniversary of the fire uh, which was last year so let's uh, read through this article here mother hopes for answers 10 years after the disappearance of Chloe Leverett and Gage Daniel it's been 10 years since the devastating night in Unionville led to a mystery that's still being investigated by the TBI. The centre of all of this, a family desperate to know what happened in 2012. I have good thoughts, good memories of being a child there, said Cheryl. There used to be a lot of fond memories. Now there's just a lot of heartache. They say time heals. It doesn't. It pacifies for a moment. The longer they've been gone, the harder it's gotten for me. There's nowhere to describe. I live the hell every day. Just imagine it, though. Just imagine it, losing both your parents and both your children and then finding out that the children weren't in there. Black cloud hanging over every day, every day. And the actual cause of the fire has never been determined. Yes, there's this propane leak, but the, the cause of the fire was undetermined. So Cheryl went on to say, my house brother came up and grabbed me and said, the last wall fell and nobody made it out. It was such a shock. I remember standing there and watching the house fire and that was the worst feeling in my life. I could not help them. Little did she know, Chloe and Gage may not have been in there and she feels that they are still alive. She says, I can still feel them. I feel the mother's intuition. I can still feel the bond with them. I know they're still alive. It's just, where are they? And there's age progression photos of what Chloe and Gage might look like now. And Cheryl says she'll never give up. She'll never give up hope of maybe one day finding out what happened to Chloe and Gage. So Chloe would now be 19, Gage 17. Did they die in that fire or not? What a strange case. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you very soon in the next video.